a pleasant day, dear STEM students. Are you excited? This is Sir Peter, your virtual pre-calculus teacher. For today's discussion, we will talk about conics and circles. Specifically, we will tackle formation of conics. So at the end of this video lesson, you should be able to illustrate different types of conics. Are you ready? So the formation of conics was started by Apollonius of Perga. So he's the one who first studied these curves formed by the intersection of a plane and a double right circular cone. How does the plane and the double right circular cone looks like? And how did the conic sections perform? Based from his discovery, there is a line lying entirely on the code that is referred to as the generator of the code. Look at the illustration here. The illustration indicates the generators of the code. So there are infinitely many generators that comprises this double right circular codes. Consequently, we also have in the figure the what we call the vertex. So all the generators of the code passes through the intersection of the two parts. And which is that part? This part. So the vertex is the intersection of the double right circular codes. And also, in addition, we have the axis, which is perpendicular to the vertex of the code. So based from the discoveries of Apollonius of Perga, we form now the three types of conics. First, if the cutting of the plane is not parallel to any generator, the curve is called an ellipse. Look at figure 1.1, how the ellipse was formed. So it is not parallel to any of the generators. If the cutting of the plane is not parallel to any of the generator, but this time it is perpendicular to the axis, so the ellipse becomes a circle. So observe again, figure 1.1, how the cutting of the plane intersects one of the generators. Second, if the cutting of the plane is parallel to one and only one generator, the curve is a parabola. So look at this one. Imagine this is a bond paper cutting the plane. Next. If the cutting of the plane is parallel to both generators, then what conic is formed? Observe figure 1.3, we form hyperbola. This one. So again, in the formation of conics, the blue illustrations here illustrates the plane and the red are the double right circular cones. And observe how they intersect with each other forming our conics. So general, generally, there are three types of conics, the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. But a circle is part of the conics because a circle is a special type of ellipse. So all in all, there are four. So the circle and the ellipse are both not parallel to any of the generators. The parabola is parallel to one of the generators, while the hyperbola is parallel to both generators. So the question is, what is a conic? So as you observe in the discovery of Apollonius of Perga, those are in three-dimensional figures. But the conic is a plain figure also. And these are curves in the Cartesian plane. So a conic, which is a two-dimensional in figure, is a set of points whose distances from a fixed point 
are in constant ratio to their distances from the fixed line that is not passing through the fixed point. So as you observe in the definition, there are three important words that you should remember. We have the fixed point, the fixed line, and the distance between the two have a what we call a constant ratio. So if a curve possesses these three characteristics, uh, the fixed point, the fixed line, and the constant ratio, then that curve will be considered a conic in two-dimensional form. Now, in analytic geometry, we also have this what we call degenerate conics. The degenerate conics are not conics, okay? But these are possible results in the intersection of the plane and the double right circular cone. So just try to imagine it as a bond paper cutting the double right circular cone. And observe figure 1.4. If the bond paper intersects the vertex, then we form a geometric figure, which is a point. Now, if the plane passes through one of the lines in the generator, then in figure 1.5, we form a line. Okay, And in figure 1.6, the intersection of the plane and the double right circular code. So there is also a possibility of the geometric figure to intersecting lines. Again, they are obviously not conic sections because conics must be curves, but they are all possible results in the intersection of the two figures. So if we have degenerate conics such as a point, line, and two intersecting lines, we will be referring to the parabola, the circle, the ellipse, and a hyperbola as what we call non-degenerate non conics. Okay, so that is the other term. Or we can also refer to them as conic sections or simply conics. So again, there are three ways to name them. We could name them as um, non-degenerate conics, conic sections, or conics. So let us summarize everything that we have talked a while ago. So observe how the figure changes from a conic, uh, degenerate conic, and a non-degenerate conic. Let's go back. So we have the um, hyperbola, two intersecting lines, the line, the point, a circle, the ellipse, and the parabola. So you could see how the um, intersection of the plane changes the geometric figure. So remember that conics are everywhere. So if you look around you, you could see a lot of parabolas, circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas around us. Here are the references used in this presentation. For our next topic, I hope that you did learn something today. So we will be tackling on the next video lesson, the standard equation of a circle. Again, this is Sir Peter, your virtual pre-calculus teacher.